entire nature possess on you're going to be seeing something like this and here on your left hand side you can see your model uh, and if you right click on it you can see different design insertions here you can be inserting a circuit design mask that 2d design or whatever it is but for antennas we use age of cis design so you're inserting an age of cis design after you insert that you're going to be seeing something like this this is an age of cis design so in these windows here you can see a model model 3 and these are the geometrical shapes that you have included in your model okay and if this is a 3D shape that you are including in your model, then you're going to be seeing in your tree material name. So this is perfect electric conductor, this is Teflon, this is FR4. And underneath that, you're going to be seeing the shapes, the 3D shapes that you have included. This is a substrate, this is a coaxial pin, this is a port cap, and this is a coax inside. All right. And then beyond that, you also have surfaces. Most of the time in real life, of course, your surfaces have thicknesses, right? But here you can, for the sake of numerical simplicity, so that the calculations are going to be shorter, you can assign these surfaces to be a 2D. And here you can see these 2D structure, the patch, the ground, and you're assigning that to be a perfect electric conductor. And to do that, you click on the surface and then right click then you will be able to see different assignments here. You can assign a boundary. When you're assigning a boundary, you can assign that boundary to be a perfect electric, perfect magnetic. You can assign it to be radiation. What does radiation mean? It means that it's an absorbing boundary. Whatever the electric field, uh, electromagnetic field hits on it, it's going to be absorbing it. Or you can assign an, a, a surface that has a finite inductance, conductance and resistance, or layered impedance as such, okay? So here for this, for the sake of this model, I have assigned the patch and the ground to be perfect E, right? Because they are conductors. Now assuming that I'm assuming that in real life, of course, I'm going to be using copper and it has finite conductivity, but here I am assuming that I only have a perfect surface. It does not have any thickness, and its conductivity is infinite, right? Okay. Then you need to have a port because this is here in this window, you're seeing your own space, the 3D space. You can include whatever you like inside this space. You can include a human body part, like if you're uh, holding a mobile phone antenna, you can include a hand, anything that you uh, want to include in a realistic environment of the antennas operating uh, setup. Okay, so, but for starters, of course, you don't want to complicate your numerical analysis, so you're going to be starting with the simplest structure. And you have included a, 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 the antenna only, right? But this problem needs to know if this is an antenna or not. It doesn't know. How is it going to be knowing that this is an active structure that you need to excite it, right? It could have been just a piece of conductor standing next to the antenna that you're trying to imitate. You're, you can design anything you like, right? You can include any kind of shape and any kind of permittivity, dielectric, uh, permittivity, permeability, whatever you like. Okay, so I know that this is an antenna and I know that I need to feed this antenna and I know my excitation point. This is, it's here. Okay, this is a coaxial line. This is the inner conductor that's touching the patch. And here is the surface of the coaxial cable. This is the outer conductor, right? And you need to be defining a port which is um, touching the inner conductor and the outer conductor of your guiding structure. Right, so if I was to click on here, you will be able to see your excitation. Here is your excitation. Can you see the red dot? That's your excitation point. It tells HF says that this is the signal point that you're going to be applying, right? Where is the port? The port is this one. So you have defined your port. How are you going to be defining it? You just um, include the shape. By the way, here you can see, you can include any kind of shapes and 
uh, 3D shapes and surfaces and stuff. Can you see? You can draw boxes or you can insert complicated structures. There's in the modeler, you can include structures. Then you right click on it. And as you were assigning boundaries, you can also assign excitation. You can just say that, okay, this is a wave port, this is a lump port, this is a terminal, this is an incident wave. You are assigning your excitation. And once you have assigned your excitation, uh, it's, it should be touching two different conductors. One is going to be your ground, the other one is going to be your signal. And then it's going to ask you which one is signal, which one is ground, and you're going to be telling it, okay, this is my signal. That's why you're seeing the red dot here, right? Now you have realized your um, structure, okay? By the way, when it's recording, is it recording my screen or your screen? Because I always, I always put your um, photos in front of me. So. Konum toya kaydediyor olabilir. Şehrin fikrini paylaşması gerekiyor. Yani I hope so. Otherwise, okay. So hmm, let's see. Anyways, if not, we can just try again. Um, all right. So now that you have your design, you have included your three D shapes, and you have included your excitation and your boundaries. Uh, I can fit all. By the way, this is a very you know um, user friendly interface that you can learn by yourself. As you can see, you can just click on rotate and rotate your shape. Or you can hide some structures, show some of them, or set to the view to a, to a predefined viewpoint and stuff as such. You can do all sorts of things. Finally, then you need to analyze this, right? And of course, HSS does not know what kind of a structure this one is. And it does not know if, um, you know, you're intending your antenna to be operating at 2.4 gigahertz or 1 gigahertz or 10 gigahertz or 60 gigahertz. You have to tell it. So this is where you tell it. So you have your solution and here's your window to define, uh, define an analysis setup. You're saying that, okay, solve this structure at 2 gigahertz and the accuracy should be set here. How? Uh, so the actual way that HFSS solves this is to divide the space into small, 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 small um, uh, triangles, tetrahedral, I think, uh, and then solve Maxwell's equations in them. Uh, so each time it's defining smaller, smaller cell sizes, <coughs> mesh sizes, it's going to get more accurate results. But where is it going to stop to get more accurate results? You have to tell it. So you can go on and on and just divide the structure into really, really, really small pieces, right? So uh, you have to tell it where to stop. And the way to tell it is here. So it's going to be calculating your S parameter and you're telling here to it that when you iterate your mesh from one mesh to another one, to a smaller cell size, check the delta S, the S parameter change depending on the previous S parameter. And if it is smaller than 2%, you're just calculating your cost function, basically. If it's smaller than 2%, then you can stop iterating my mesh. So you don't do any more passes while you're solving it. And also, there is another limit to it. You, sometimes it just never can reach to 2%, and it, it, it can go on and on and on. So you can tell it, okay, try to get to that point with this number of passes. So maximum number of passes that you're going to be trying is going to be 15. Beyond that, just don't try. The, the solution will, should be okay. That's what you, you're telling here in simple terms, okay? And for this um, moment, don't worry about the rest of the, um, rest of the parameters. You can set them to default and use these ones. And then, now you have given it to solve uh, a sol solution frequency, but you're interested in seeing your S parameters in a certain a band. So you have to define that as well because the input parameters should be from one gigahertz to three gigahertz, if that's what you want. You have to tell it. So you're defining a sweep. If you right click on it, 
you can tell it to include add frequency sweep as you can see here. So I have already included a sweep here. In this one, it says that go from one gigahertz to three gigahertz and you're going to be calculating my solution at 100 points. And I have uh, selected an interpolating sweep. I don't want to go into details of different types of sweeps right now. I don't think you need that much detail, but you can ask me. If you're really interested in antenna design, then I can teach you this kind of stuff. And finally, results. Uh, after you solve this, you have set everything up and you right clicked on it and said analyze. It's going to run and it's going to take a while depending on the complication of your life. If it's a complex structure, it might take a day to solve or it might take two minutes to solve. It depends on the operating frequency and your structure. So you have analyzed, if you hit analyze button and it's analyzed, now you can see your results. The results that I am interested in, you are interested in, I am interested in more results, but you are interested in two different results. One is return loss and the other one is gain. Okay. One pet loss exponent, ne demek? Half loss exponent is for propagation. So I'm going to be teaching that to you as well for uh, when I am teaching you Frisk's equation. Uh, where you have two different antennas, one of them is transmitting and the other one is receiving. And what happens to, to this power as this one is transmitted in the medium? If you have lots of reflections and you have lots of refraction, then your path loss exponent is going to be higher. But if you assume that the medium that you're propagating your information into is a perfect medium, a perfect vacuum, then path loss exponent is going to be two. But that we are going to be discussing it later. You can't see that result here in HFSS. You have to be using another tool in order to calculate the propagation. This is only for antenna, okay? For propagation, you have to be using a different tool. Okay, uh, and then we also have some models in order to estimate this uh, this path loss exponent. So for say body area networks that I always use because I'm interested in variables and implant loss, uh, we can use. Uh, the path loss exponent of uh, three for on body cases. And if it's a non line of sight situation, it might go up to five to six and stuff. We are modeling them. And then this is also done through measurements and stuff. Okay. Hey, mesela bir yerdeki insan sayısına da bağlı mı yoksa sadece? Of course, yes. Düz olup No, human body is going to be a big uh, issue because it's lossy. Uh, as you, if you if your path is filled with lossy medium, then you're in trouble. Your path loss exponent is going to be higher. What does that mean? It means that remember when we had this. Okay, let's leave this discussion to the hour where we are discussing Chris's equation. Okay, because it's a long discussion. It's not simple. Um, all right, this is, this is what it is really. You can right click on results and create different types of reports. Uh, far field report is going to give you 3D polar plots as you can see here in the game. And in terminal solution, you can plot a rectangular plot and then choose S parameter, Y parameter, Z parameter. You might remember from um, uh, communication electronics course, right? We had Z parameters and other different parameters, remember? I'm sure you all remember that. Okay, so here in S parameter results, you can pick your family. So if you are defining in your project work, I would like you to try different patch axis and patch wise, right? Different lengths and widths. So here you're going to be seeing all these different lengths and widths, and you can use all these values and plot your report, and then you will be able to see different, different, different curves for different cases and all that. Okay. <laughs> 